a water mill unique in Europe. The karst area is extraordinary in Krish Valley. We have 300 caves, of which only three are open to the general public without a special gear. If you get to Bihor in June, you must not miss a special event, according to Adrian Johas. In Krish Valley, there used to be the salt customs. In the 18th and 19th century, salt was being shipped from Romania to Hungary. We have a special circuit, a reenactment with a traditional wooden raft. The oars are also in wood, and the raft is driven by young men in traditional costumes, transporting a load of salt. There is also a customs agent, as they had in the olden times. The salt was loaded in carts at the salt mines in Pride, taken to the Huedin area, and there it was set on rafts. The rafts went to Hungary, where they sold both salt and wood, and the raft people went back by land. Each raft had to leave a bag of salt at the customs. This is a really interesting circuit, which brings loads of tourists to the area. Each June we have a weekend event dedicated to the salt customs. Over 2,000 people are involved in this activity. Paul Jakobas is the manager of an eco-tourism association and he told us about the key elements that the tourist programs available in Bihar County capitalize on. First, I would recommend the area inhabited by rocks, the mountainous part of the county, and the caves, which are some of the most interesting caves in the country. The trip to the Mots land is essentially a cultural experience, but beyond that, you have lots of other choices, depending on how much physical effort you are willing to put into it. First, I would mention horse riding. The area is perfect for that activity. Then you have trekking, which can take you to plenty of interesting places, like karst plateaus, gorges, canyons, and so on. Then there are cultural programs taking you to places where you can witness unique activities, like the local boardwalk, the painting of Easter eggs, and the building of wooden churches, which rival those of Maramoyes. Mirella, who is a local entrepreneur in the Pogratai Mountains, he set up a project to showcase the beauty and simplicity of wooden houses. His proposal for tourists is to live for a few hours to a few days, like a local villager enjoying local life and customs. You will have no difficulty in finding accommodation in the area. Orada has plenty of hotels and in villages you find plenty of BBs with prices for all. And that's all from Traveler's Guide. Coming up next in this program... Guests on Radio Romania International. As Vana Dam and Stefan Ionescu entered the wine business in 2007, they started with a wine barn, bought a vineyard, gradually developed a wine cellar and then started selling. We talked to them about the history of Romanian wine in the last 10 years. From what experience has taught them, Razvana Dam. The wine market in Romania, as well as all across the world, is dropping. Sales have gone down everywhere, but in Romania, premium wine sales went up as compared to wines of lower quality. At present, the latter account for 85% of the market, while only 15% of wines on the shelf are premium, namely wines with prices of 15 euros and up. It may look like a paradox, but it is an improvement. Ten years ago, there were few to no premium wines in Romania. In 2007, Romanian wines saw a visible improvement, mostly generated by Romania's air position that year. Here is what Razvan Adam told us. The market shrank mostly due to the economic crisis, because when it comes to choosing between buying a home item and a bottle of wine, most people would opt for the former. Wine is not a necessity right now. 
But as things have started to walk up, the market is now reporting a slight increase. Wine sellers have seen their production go up. Most of them are using state-of-the-art technologies, which required investment. The level of absorption of EU funds is 100% in this field, unlike any other in Romania. And this has resulted in a competitive market and an increase in quality. Romania's joining the EU definitely had an impact. Among the many conditions the EU has imposed in the field was to revamp the entire industry. As a wine producer, you need proper documentation. You must have a well-defined program in order to obtain financing. Everything is done in compliance with EU regulations. Stefan Ionescu too believes that the EU accession of Romania has brought benefits to the Romanian winemaking industry. Living standards in Romania have improved and along with them the needs of Romanian consumers. They started appreciating the high quality of wine as compared to the other wines in the market. In the first phase, the Romanian market was flooded by imports of a certain quality. Producers then found it hard to put out a low-quality product and promote it as a premium wine. Next in our program, Sports on Radio Romania International.